Brown Antarello, and I'm a large format technical consultant for HP. I work exclusively with large format printers, and it's my pleasure today to talk to you about a Z6200. The Z6200 is our flagship model, pure production, pure speed, going into the graphic arts environment. There are lots of features and benefits of working with this printer in that environment. I'm going to start today by doing a little product walk around. I'm going to show you some of the um, components and things that make this printer unique in the environment. I'll start over here looking at the ink cartridges. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping that you notice right away is that you'll see that there is a red ink cartridge. This is called chromatic red and what we've done by adding this ink into the collection is we've radically increased the color gamut of this product. Um, you'll also see um, two blacks. One is a photo black and one is a matte black. It will only use one of the blacks at a time, depending on what media you're working with. Um, this printer comes in versions of widths of either 42 inches or 60 inches. This is a printer that always comes in a non-postscript version, with postscript being an available accessory. As I'm working with the 42 inch version, um, it has and comes standard with a catch basket. If it is that you're working with the 60 inch version, you would see another piece here that's actually called a media loading table. And it's an accessory that's for the benefit and ergonomic and safety of the person loading media. A 60 inch roll of media is sometimes awkward to handle and we want to make sure that our end users never hurt themselves and always have the, the most um, easy experience in loading media. The 60 inch version would also come with a take up reel as opposed to a basket, catch basket. If it is that you were to be working with the shorter unit, the 42 inch unit, you could purchase the uh, media take up reel as an accessory. Um, some things that are kind of standard on almost every design jet, every design jet I can think of, you can see um, a blue lever that's used for loading media. We have a front panel that we're going to be looking at in depth later. It's going to show us lots of information about the printer. It's going to allow us to make choices um, and communicate with us. We see a door here. Underneath this door is an ink consumable uh, part of the ink system called a maintenance cartridge. It's where our print heads are going to park. It's where they're going to um, um, they're going to get healthy under here. They're, that's what they're going to do. They're going to um, have a place where they can um, wipe and park and, and just stay in good condition um, getting ready to print. Uh, we have um, just the door here, very simply. It comes up. We have some things that are inside that make this printer absolutely unique. There's a tiny lens that's on the platen of the printer that represents the area where a technology called OMAS, an optical media advanced sensor, actually takes images of the back of the media, allowing for um, the media advance to be extraordinarily precise. This is really critical for this printer because this printer being built for speed, the accuracy in media advance means we can print very, very quickly without any banding. Um, what you have is you have a socket for the power cord to go in and you have the power switch, very simply. We also have an area, it's a compartment that allows you to do a couple of things. You have an area where you would plug in the serial cable that would be appropriate for uh, the take-up reel, and driving and supporting the take-up reel. We also have the um, high-speed internet slot. We also have um, the spot for the USB drive that would represent um, the postscript accessory. It displays up-to-date information about the status of the printer, the ink cartridges, the print heads, the maintenance cartridge, all sorts of things. It also gives us guidance on using the printer. There are many operations where there are animations that will be displayed and available for you to review so that you know exactly what to do when managing your printer. It's also going to display warnings and error messages. Um, it's the area also that we can uh, use to change values and the values of printer settings and operations of the printer. The first thing that we have is we have a set of keys on the left and these are called direct access keys. This first one that looks like a piece of paper going down is actually called a paper loading key. The one thing I want you to know about it is that it can also be a paper unloading key. So if you actually press it while media is loaded, it will unload your media. 
this button here, an I with the circle, is going to show us information about our paper. It's going to let us know everything from the media type that's loaded to the calibration status of that media, as well as how many feet of media are remaining on the roll. This one is valuable and is unique to uh, Design Jet Z6200. Um, you, when you press this key, what it will do is it will, con it will complete printing the job that it's currently on, and then the next period in between prints, it will pause. While the printer is paused, it will allow you to load a new roll of media. That's important when you're working in production because you can have a long run and you don't want the printer to run out of paper. The last button is a form, feed, and cut button. What it will do is it will advance media about three inches and make a cut. This portion of the front control panel is actually this, the display. It's going to display any errors or warnings about your printer. Um, another button that's very often used in working with the design jet is this key. This is the back key. It's used to go to a previous step in a procedure or an interaction. It's also used to go to an upper level or to leave, an op leave the option in the menu. The menu button is used to return to a higher level of the hierarchy or it allows you to go into certain functional areas which we're going to look at later. The next set of buttons that we're going to look at is actually more like a rocker switch. It's an up button and a down button and with that you're going to be able to scroll through options either up or down and you'll also be able to enter values up or down depending on which direction you press the key. Next, in the center, is a teal OK button, and you're going to use that option quite a lot. It's going to either confirm an action, or it's going to say OK uh, to a selected value. This is actually, it's a, a small bar, it's actually a light, and it's a status light. When the light is green, it means that your printer is ready to go. If it's flashing green, it means that your printer is processing. If it's an amber light, it means you need to pay attention because there could be something the matter with your printer. It might be um, needing attention in some way or another. It might need to have consumables. It might need to check for um, paper jam, media loaded. You're always looking for this to be green. That puts you in your, in your ready to go condition. The button with the X is actually the cancel key. You're going to use this to either cancel a job or to abort a procedure. There are also certain messages on the front panel that might be displayed that in order to clear them, you'll need to use this cancel key as well. If that's the case, the message on the front panel itself will tell you to use the cancel key to exit the menu. Lastly, this is the power key. Um, it's used to power the device on and off. A design jet in particular should be left on whenever possible. There are certain maintenance procedures that happen with the print heads that um, will happen even if you're not in attendance. These are automatic features and routines that the printer goes through, but the printer needs to be on in order to be able to have those routines run. Just like the status bar here, there's a light inside of the power key. Green means go, amber needs re means requiring attention. Of the things that you'll use your front panel for, many of them begin by um, looking at the icons that you can access by touching the menu button. Looking at the main menu, you, you will see a series of icons. Each of the icons have graphic representation of the functionality listed below. You'll lose, use the rocker key to navigate through the icons. You can also see a text representation of what the icon means and get a general idea of what functionality might be below. You can see as I navigate through the text changes and helps me understand what's happening. If it is that I want to access the functionality beneath the icon, I'll simply press the OK key and then I can use the up and down button again to navigate through. Anytime there's a plus button, I can go deeper into the hierarchy of the menu by pressing OK. I can use the back button to go upwards through the hierarchy. Some of the most frequently, func frequently used functions on the icons include in the paper menu to either load or unload media. You can see those, those are the top two options. You can also view the loaded media, but remember you can also um, use the quick action key right here, the I with the button, to view information about the loaded media as well. 
The job management queue looks like folders, and when you access this button, you have an opportunity to reprint the last job, pause the printing, or you can actually, with the plus, we know we can go into it, we can say OK, and we can look at what jobs have been printed previously. From here, we can either reprint any of these jobs, um, view information, or delete the jobs from the queue. When we're looking at droplet icons, we're looking at information about the ink system. If we say OK to this, we know that we can do all sorts of things pertaining to the consumables, including viewing any of the status of the ink consumables or replacing any of the components of the ink system. With the setup icon, which looks like a wrench, we have all sorts of things here that are beneficial. Um, you can set your printing preferences. You can also look at print, re re hmm, print retrieval and see an opportunity for you to either enable the cutter or disable the cutter. This is important. If it is that you um, are working with your take-up reel and you want your jobs to continue printing without being cut in between, this is the area where you would disable the cutter. You can also see in job management options, you can see opportunities to set up your printer so that you can execute functionality like nesting. You can also make choices about when it is that you want your printer to start printing. You have front panel options. This is important. Um, one of the things that I see most often used here is to um, select the units. And what that means is that do I want to work in English displaying inches or do I want to work in a metric configuration that would show me my paper width in millimeters. Next, the page with the stars down below is an icon that's all dedicated to image quality and maintenance. There's an option here called Optimize Print Quality. That functionality is unique to an HP DesignJet Z6200. When it is that we access the Optimize Print Quality, it's going to let me know that it's going to execute a printhead cleaning, a paper advance calibration, a printhead alignment, and a color calibration all at once. If you're going to optimize your print quality, just understand that it might take a few minutes. This is a good one to start first thing in the morning with while you're settling down at your desk and grabbing your coffee. It's also a chance for you to manually calibrate the color, align the print heads, or execute a function called a print diagnostic image that I'll talk to you about later. We also have an opportunity to view the status of our connectivity, um, set things up manually if we so choose. There's also um, an icon called internal prints. And this is kind of a neat area where it is that you can um, print some internally stored files just for tests. Um, it also helps um, sometimes in a diagnostic if it is that you feel like your printer isn't generating colors that you would expect or maybe not printing at all, you'll understand that if you're able to print one of the internal demo prints that your printer is functioning and that the colors are well and you can start sorting and looking for issues other places. Also there's just an information key um, including log. So there is a lot of functionality happening here in the front control panel but I want to let you know something. Inside of the internal prints icon there's an opportunity for you to go to user information prints and actually print the menu map. In that way, you'll always have um, documented hard copy example and representation of the hierarchy of the menus. Even if you use this a menu map at the beginning as a new end user, um, it will help you become familiar with what options are available to you. I hope this helps you out in helping understand the functionality of the front control panel.